This video is brought to you by Moft. As a tech reviewer, I get to use and test many different phones, but there is one that I keep coming back to, uh, and for the past six months, that has been the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Now, to me, the 14 Pro Max delivers in each of the key areas that make a smartphone great, and does so in a way like no other. There really is a lot to like with this phone, uh, but still, this phone is also not perfect. Now, today I'm gonna to share with you my long-term experience with the 14 Pro Max covering everything you need to know. As always guys, I will leave all the purchase links down in the description. But first, I am doing a giveaway on this brand new iPhone 14. And if you want a chance to win, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave a comment with your Instagram username. And then follow me on Instagram where I'll announce the winner on June the 11th. In terms of the price, uh, the 14 Pro Max with 128 gigabytes will come in at a price of $1,099 and even more if you go for the 256 gigabyte version that I have. Now, I do think that 128 gigabytes will be fine for most, but if you do a lot of content creation like I do, uh, the 256 gigabyte version will give you more breathing room in the long term. This makes me wish the 14 Pro Max started at 256 gigabytes, much like the S23 Ultra. The one thing is clear, the 14 Pro Max has a high asking price and with that come high expectations. In terms of the design, I will say the 14 Pro Max definitely looks the part. Uh, we get this squared off design that I think looks really sharp. Uh, I especially like the matte glass on the back. This is great at resisting fingerprints and also uh, the stainless steel frame on the side adds a touch of shine to the phone, uh, which helps it set itself apart from the regular iPhone 14 line. Uh, and I think also adds a element of luxury that you don't get in any other iPhone. Now in the hand, uh, the 14 Pro Max definitely feels substantial uh, in terms of the weight and also the size Size, and this can be both a good thing and a bad thing. Coming in at 240 grams, you definitely get a quality feel uh, of something that is well constructed, but it also feels dense. Now to put this uh, in perspective, the regular iPhone 14 comes in at just 170 grams. And this really is uh, a pretty big difference that you will notice. Now the 14 Pro Max is actually my first uh, Pro Max phone. And I switched to this phone from the regular iPhone 13, uh, but it only took a few days or so to get used to the uh, larger size and weight of the Pro Max. One of the things that was particularly important to me uh, is that the 14 Pro Max is still semi one hand usable. Uh, and what I mean with that is say in a message, I can still just about reach the other side of the keyboard without having to use uh, two hands. This is especially great if say you're walking by a busy road uh, and wanting to quickly respond to a message on your phone. Though one thing I definitely can't do on the 14 Pro Max, and I think most can't either, uh, is reach the top corners of the display without pulling out uh, your second hand. But that said, in my opinion, the slight compromise in portability pales in comparison uh, when you look at the big advantages that you get with this larger size, namely both in display as well as in the battery. Let's talk about the display first. Now the display on the 14 Pro Max comes in at 6.7 inches. Uh, this makes it substantially bigger than the 6.1 inches that we get on the regular iPhone 14 Pro or regular iPhone 14. Uh, and I absolutely love it. Now for me, uh, my phone plays a big role in running my company as well as this YouTube channel and the larger display on the 14 Pro Max essentially just translates into letting me get more done. You see more of everything, uh, more lines in a text, more roads on a map. Uh, when editing photos, it's easier to see details and also means less zooming in when, for example, reading an article online or browsing the web. Everything just has more room. Uh, and ironically, despite its larger size, this actually makes the 14 Pro Max more comfortable to use uh, in terms of the display. It's a little bit like uh, comparing a laptop display versus a proper desktop setup. The bigger display on the 14 Pro Max is just really nice to use. Uh, and this I would say is just as true six months later. In fact, I don't see myself going back to the regular size iPhone after getting used to the larger screen on the 14 Pro Max. Still, I do wish Apple took full advantage of this larger display. Uh, yes, you see more content at a time and apps and icons are bigger, uh, but a feature like split screen multitasking, something you do get on the S23 Ultra, uh, is something I really enjoy using. Uh, for example, having a web browser open whilst being able to take notes, say you're researching a product or something. Uh, this is a feature I would love to see brought to the iPhone as especially on the 14 Pro Max, the display size is there and something uh, I definitely do miss. Now, if you are interested, I have actually done a full comparison video between the S23 Ultra and the 14 Pro Max, which I'll be sure to leave linked at the end of this video. 
Still, the display on the 14 Pro Max is truly gorgeous uh, and an absolute pleasure to use. It is an OLED display, uh, and this means that your colors really come to life. You also get that super smooth 120 hertz refresh rate, and this makes any movement on screen buttery smooth, uh, something I do consider essential at this price point. And it is also the brightest display I've ever seen uh, by far, in fact, going up to 2000 nits. Now, here in London, uh, we don't get much sun, but when we do, I can still see my phone screen uh, clearly at all times, no matter how bright. The 14 Pro Max also introduced the Dynamic Island. Now that's this little uh, replacement for the notch up here. While I wouldn't call this feature revolutionary like some do, uh, it is still nice to be able to quickly switch between apps or see app info like term return directions uh, or like the timer that I have here. After six months of daily use, let's talk about durability. Now, I would say my 14 Pro Max has held up pretty much perfect. Uh, I do use a case on most days. However, on some days where I haven't, uh, this thing has actually taken a few drops. Uh, and I will say that it's held up really well, so I have no significant scratches, uh, even on the polished stainless steel frame, zero cracks or marks on the uh, matte glass back. The only damage that I do have is some hairline scratches on the display. So I do recommend you use a screen protector, uh, and I'll be sure to leave my recommended screen protector down in the description. Speaking of recommended accessories, a great way to add protection, uh, functionality, as well as power to your iPhone is with the Snap Phone Case and Snap Stand Power Set from Moft. The Snap Phone Case is made from this premium vegan leather uh, that feels really good to the touch as it retains that fine grained texture and adds a little bit of grip, especially great on the larger uh, 14 Pro Max. I also really like the metal buttons which retain that tactile click when you press them uh, and then we also get a nice microfiber finish on the inside to protect your phone from scratches. This case is of course fully MagSafe compatible, so it will pair perfectly uh, with the stand power set. Now this is really cool. This actually consists of two parts. So first we have the wallet and stand, and then we also have the battery pack. These use a modular design, so you can customize them uh, depending on the situation you're in. So for example, uh, on most days, I will just use the wallet and the stand. Uh, the wallet here is also made of this very premium vegan leather and holds up to three cards here in the back. Now in London, I actually use Apple Pay for most of my cards, so only carry around one to two uh, physical cards, which will perfectly fit here in the back. And one of the cool features uh, of this stand as well is that when it is open, it also doubles as a grip. But my favorite feature of the wallet is that it also works as a stand where you can prop your phone up both in portrait mode uh, as well as in landscape mode. And this is great for watching videos, uh, especially when traveling or on the go. Speaking of travel, uh, this is where the 3400 milliamp hour battery pack comes in. Because it is wireless uh, and also uses MagSafe, all you have to do is simply place it on the back of your phone uh, and your phone will then automatically start to charge. No need for a cable. Uh, and also thanks to its relatively thin profile, it is small enough to to be able to comfortably use while still holding your phone in your hand uh, or say charge in your pockets. Perfect for travel days where even the 14 Pro Max can sometimes need a top up of extra power. Again, for me, what really brings this together uh, is this fully modular design where you can choose to just use the wallet or just use the battery pack uh, or use both depending on your situation. I think these accessories are a great way to add functionality to your iPhone uh, and do so in a way that is stylish and also practical. If you're interested in uh, the Snap Phone case and the Snap Stand Power Set from Moft, I'll be sure to leave all the purchase links down in the description. Okay, let's talk about the cameras. Now, right away, I can say that the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the best all-around smartphone camera that you can get out right now. Let's take a look at some examples. The iPhone 14 Pro Max has a 48 megapixel main sensor, which uses four times more pixels for even better 12 megapixel photos. And here you can see how well the details are retained in this image, both in the bright building structure, uh, as well as the darker leaves of the tree with excellent dynamic range. The 12 megapixel ultra wide lens retains impressive sharpness and color accuracy, highlighted both in the warmth of the brick uh, and the accurate blue skies above. And here too, the ultra wide really captures the scale of the building, keeping detail in the flowers in the foreground uh, and the brick in the background. And then there's the 3x telephoto and digital 2x telephoto lenses, and these especially shine in portrait photography, adding depth to the frame, uh, as well as a very natural looking bokeh that is hard to believe this was shot on an iPhone. And here too, in this example, you can see the telephoto beautifully frames the Apple Watch while blurring the plane in the back. All lenses from the ultra wide to the telephoto on their own perform very well, but like on many smartphones, there are some inconsistencies between them. 
For example, here you can see the same shot, shot on each lens. While colors, I think, hold up well, better than most, the dynamic range does vary. Check out how different the clouds look between the different lenses. I do hope Apple improves this to create better continuity between lenses. When it comes to low lights, while others, like for example the S23 Ultra, may add even more light to the image, the 14 Pro Max consistently retains far better accuracy in terms of colors and sharpness. You can see the difference in lighting on each floor of the bright skyscrapers in the distance, uh, and yet still see the midnight sky, including some stars. Really impressive. Flipping to the front, the selfie camera is accurate, uh, with no excessive skin smoothing, and thus shows all of my grey hairs. Great. It also now has autofocus, which means you get sharper focus, and is actually able to add a little bit of depth of field, creating a better image overall. No matter the situation, the iPhone 14 Pro Max has a very versatile camera. While it may be outperformed in one specific area, such as zoom range or megapixel count, no other phone delivers this level of consistent quality regardless of lighting or situation like the 14 Pro Max. And this makes it a camera system you can truly count on. To add to this, iPhones are known for their video quality, and the 14 Pro Max is no exception. In fact, I often use 4K 60fps footage shot on my 14 Pro Max in my YouTube videos. The image is super sharp, colors are true to life, and the autofocus is reliable. As well as this, the inbuilt image stabilization makes handheld footage appear as shot on a gimbal. The 14 Pro Max also adjusts exposure, ISO, and white balance in a very smooth way uh, that no other smartphone has matched. After six months and also testing several other flagships, uh, the 14 Pro Max remains to be the best all-around smartphone camera that you can get right now. Aside from the display, uh, one of the main reasons that people get the larger 14 Pro Max size is for the bigger battery. Now, I would describe myself as a power user, uh, but even for me, the 14 Pro Max can comfortably last me all day and evening, still with around 40% remaining. And this means I can get around two days of moderate use. This is truly incredible uh, and translates to around nine to 10 hours of screen on time. Now to put this number in perspective, the regular iPhone 14 and 14 Pro get around seven hours of screen on time. And then importantly, the battery life on the 14 Pro Max uh, remains just as good today, six months later, as it was on day one. And for those who are wondering, my battery health uh, at this stage is still at 98%. Now I charge my phone mostly overnight, where fast charging matters less, but still compared to the competition, uh, the 27 watts of the 14 Pro Max is on the slower side. It would have been nice to see Apple include faster, uh, for example, 40 watt charging in the event that you do need a quick top up. Of course, the 14 Pro Max does enable MagSafe. Now, I really like this a lot, uh, especially for charging, as this means you don't need to carefully align on the wireless charger. Uh, you can just drop it onto the charger and let the magnets align your phone. No more waking up in the morning to find your phone hasn't charged because you haven't perfectly aligned it on the charger. Of course, MagSafe uh, also allows for other accessories like the ones from Moth that we looked at earlier. Uh, all in all, I would say MagSafe is a feature that I've really grown to like and something I do miss on phones that don't have it. The iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max also brought crash detection and emergency SOS via satellite. Now, thankfully, I haven't had to use either of these features, but I will say it is reassuring to know that these are there and active in the background, especially when traveling. Now let's talk about performance and longevity, two very important areas for any phone, uh, but especially one of this price. Now the 14 Pro Max is powered by Apple's latest A16 Bionic chip, uh, and today I will say it is super fast. You get practically zero lag, no stutters, apps load fast, stay open in the background, uh, and switching between apps is truly a breeze. Now, iPhones are known for providing a really fluid experience, uh, and I can comfortably say that the 14 Pro Max, especially with that 120 hertz refresh rate on the display, is the smoothest experience yet. And even in heavier apps, like for example, editing photos in Lightroom, uh, no matter how many raw images or layers, the 14 Pro Max keeps up super well, not dissimilar to how my MacBook Pro keeps up. And this, I would say, is quite an achievement. Now the A16 Bionic chip was powerful on day one, and I would say six months later is just as powerful today, and I think will remain so for many years to come as Apple supports their phones for longer than anyone. In fact, I would expect the iPhone 14 Pro Max to get another six years of software updates as well as new features. Uh, by the way, this is more compared to the regular iPhone 14 and 14 Plus, which have the older A15 Bionic chip. All of this means that with the iPhone 14 Pro Max, you get truly top of the line performance as well as unmatched longevity. And this is also in part why iPhones hold their value so well. 
So at the end of the day, uh, six months later, is the iPhone 14 Pro Max worth it? Well, yes, the upfront cost of the 14 Pro Max is high, but when you look at everything it offers from the durable build uh, to that incredible design, the best in class cameras, the one to two day battery life, as well as top of the line performance, and then divide that cost over the many years that this phone will last, I think for many, including myself, this phone is more than worth it. And it's in fact why the 14 Pro Max is my phone of choice. But anyway, guys, uh, those are my thoughts on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Uh, and if you are interested, I will leave the purchase links down in the description. And if you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my iPhone 14 Pro first 10 things to do to really get the most out of this phone. Uh, and if you are curious about more tech that I use every day, be sure to check out my recent everyday carry for 2023 video. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.